Now, from Wish TV, this is The Zone Extra, presented by Franciscan Health Sports Medicine. Coming up tonight, the spring sports calendar is in full swing. Let's go and go in, and that one is gone. Cole early wide, and the Royals are on board. In the coach's corner, meet the man leading a top five baseball program at Noblesville. Plus, our athletes of the week are starring on the track at Park Tudor. Being a small school like Park Tudor, we've never won a state championship like that. We're off to the races on The Zone Extra right now. Good evening and welcome to The Zone Extra. I'm Andrew Chernoff. What a great week of high school sports action here in central Indiana. In the coach's corner, his Millers are off to a strong start this year and ranked number four in the state this week. Noblesville's baseball's Justin Kiever joins me for a conversation. Plus, our athletes of the week are shining on the track at one of the smaller schools in the state. We'll introduce you to a trio of stars from Park Tudor High School. And do not miss the latest edition of Ask the Commissioner, where we connect with Paul Nydig of the IHSAA. Now let's take a look at this week in high school sports. Friday evening, it was a Hoosier Crossroads showdown as Hamilton Southeastern hosted Zionsville. Top of the first, Zionsville has the bases loaded, but HSE's Ethan Lund comes up with the big strikeout to end the inning. That was one of seven Ks on the night for Lund. Nash Wagner dealing on the mound for the Eagles as well. Bottom three, he gets Maddox Bach looking. That's 10 strikeouts for Wagner on the night as well. But in the bottom of the fourth, HSE's Cole Early Wine to deep left field and that is gone. One of only two hits on the night for the Royals, but it's enough. HSE wins it one nothing. Saturday afternoon was Heritage Christian playing host to Traders Point Christian. Bottom first, Heritage Christian's Andrew Wiggins. Shot to right and yeah, knew it as soon as it came off the bat. A two run homer for the future IU Hoosier. Heritage Christian leads two nothing. Knights down four in this one, but battle back. Top three, TJ Robinson with a single. That scores a pair and cuts the deficit in half. But Heritage Christian just too much on this afternoon. Carson Wilhite. How about this single? That drives in a run in the bottom of the inning. Eagles go on to win it six to four. So here's a look at this week's Class 4A baseball coaches poll. Number one, Center Grove. The Trojans remain at the top for the second consecutive week. Then we have a tie for second between Carroll and Lake Central. Noblesville is fourth, while Carmel is fifth. To softball now, where the season seems to be flying by. In fact, we are just 10 days away from the sectional draw and just over a month away from the start of the tournament. Last Friday, it was Mooresville hosting Monrovia. Bottom second, Mooresville's Zoe Kugelman. How about the squeeze bunt? Josie Hare, the head first slide at the plate. She is safe. Mooresville leads 4-0. Later in the inning, more from Mooresville. Sophia Guy with a shot to right, and that's a two-run triple. Part of a 10-run inning for the Pioneers. Third inning, Maddie Pierini. The single right here through the hole, and that goes in the left, scores a run. Mooresville wins 18-1. The Pioneers enter this week's action 8-2-1 on the season. So here's a peek at the coaches softball poll in 4A. Ron Colley, number one. Center Grove, number two. Columbus North, Avon, and Bedford North Lawrence are third, fourth, and fifth, respectively. Boys volleyball action from last Thursday night. Whiteland hosting Lawrence North. First set, Warriors looking good. Eshawn Kelly comes up with the kill. Whiteland with the first 10 points of the match, they cruise in that first set. Second set, much closer. LN serving. The Warriors, though, set up John McCoy, who puts it away. Whiteland takes that second set, 25-23. The Warriors go on to win it in straight sets. Congrats to the Warriors. And girls lacrosse, last Thursday evening, it was sixth-ranked Noblesville hosting Zionsville. First half tied at one. Reese Godby with the goal. Zionsville takes the lead. Early second half, Miller's battle back. Chloe Barnett forces the turnover and finds Molly Adams, who scores. Noblesville still down those 6-3, and the Millers cannot complete the comeback because Zionsville gets the win 13-10. In high school hoops, one of the stars of this year's state championship, Ben Davis Giants, has a new landing spot for next season. 
Zane Dowdy, the 6'9", dominant center and leading scorer for the Giants, is heading to Ball State. Dowdy averaged around 14 points and over nine rebounds a game during the Giants' perfect season. Time for a break, but we have much more ahead on the Zone Extra. Up next, it's the coach's corner. His Millers are off to a great start to the season. Noblesville baseball head coach Justin Kiever joins the show for a conversation. And still ahead, they are a trio of athletes starring on the track for Park Tudor. We'll introduce you to our Athletes of the Week. This is the Zone Extra, presented by Franciscan Health Sports Medicine. The Coach's Corner, presented by Bailey and Wood Mortgage Lender. Welcome back to the Zone Extra. Time now for our Coach's Corner. The Noblesville baseball team is off to a great start this season with several quality wins, helping earn them the number four ranking in the state this week. Welcome to the Zone Extra, the head coach of the Millers, this guy, Justin Kiever. Justin, thanks for being here. How would you assess your team's start to this season? Yeah, thanks. Good to be here. I, I tell you, uh, we're really excited with with our start. Um, our schedule has been really difficult. Um, a lot of good ball clubs around here. We took a trip down to uh, Kentucky and Tennessee and played some good teams down there. And and uh, guys are trying to get better. And uh, it's just been a good opportunity for us to play in some good weather. And uh, everybody else is getting better too. And so we got a lot of work to do still. Always good time here with the good weather. Justin, what stands out about this team this season? Well, it's a real connected group. Um, got a good mix of some experience and some younger players. Uh, they're really meshing well. Uh, we've been having some really strong at bats and our pitching's been, starting pitching's been really strong. Um, wait for our defense to play to its potential, but uh, um, they kind of put some, get, put some games together and. And most importantly, these guys really fight. Uh, they really uh, come to the ballpark and compete all seven innings. And uh, that's given us a chance in these 11, first 11 games. Is there any particular player? And I know you're impressed with your whole group, but is there one guy that has really stood out this year, whether it's just improvement or just playing to his full potential right now? Well, I think uh, we got some kind of speak to some of our seniors is like uh, Bryce Riggs has really been, he's been a three year starter for us. Um, he's been our, one of our top pitchers, um, and he's really come along with the plate this year. Shown some really good leadership, and uh, Jacob Edwards has been a rock for us behind the plate. Again, shown really good leadership. Um, those are two big guys too that jumped out. Nolan Decker's had a really good year junior for us. Um, again, he's another three-year starter. A lot of get, gets some good experience. Guys shown some younger guys the way, and um, it's been a really fun group to coach. And it's really been fun because you've have some older players and taking an ownership of the experience and we just get to, get to be able to guide the ship a little bit and uh, but these guys really taking control. Yeah Decker having plenty of strikeouts this year on the mound for sure. The goal is to obviously win a state championship and Justin did this at Noblesville back in 2014. Hard to believe it's almost 10 years ago coach. Uh, how does this group maybe compare to that group? Oh I think each team is its own unique um, entity uh, in a certain degree, but they compete very similar, uh, very similar in their uh, the way they approach the game, and the way they, and the way they the way they compete. Um, that team again had a whole year in the belt, they had a good mix of some younger and older guys, um, so it's very similar in that regard. But um, every year is different, and and uh, they do have some uh, some ingredients. Of uh, some similar uh, characteristics to be a championship team at that level. And so we're excited about our potential. For, for you, every year, I'm sure every group is different as we've already touched on. And I'm sure there's a different motto to each team. Is there a certain motto that you guys have embraced this year? Um, our motto is that we're, is what that it is every year, pretty much in terms of um, it's about us. It's not about us individually. And so it's about us as a group. And uh, we'll be, it's about what we can invest, not what we can, um, what we can spend in that, that regard. It's, I tell you, it's really hard to kind of put your team in front of your, uh, yourself, and it's not human nature, and that's something we combat every day. Um, and they understand how this game is very difficult, and they need each other, and we invest in each other. And so when we have our good days, we have to help each other, but also in those tough days, even when we're not having a good one, can we make somebody else's day better? And um, that's that's the challenge we have in this difficult game of baseball. Um, we want we want to prepare um, 
and have the discipline every day, but also when the game time comes, we just gotta trust our training and let her fly. You wanna have some good days coming up. The schedule, you guys are busy as can be over the course of the next week. Let's take a look at the schedule. It wraps up with back-to-back -back games against Westfield next week. What are the challenges that you guys are gonna face in the next seven, eight days? Really good players and really good coaching. <laughs> So in this area, in our, in our conference, especially in the Hoosier Crossroads Conference, um, every game is a really good, is a real challenge. And if you don't play your best, you're going to be in, you're going to be in deep um, trouble. So uh, it's it's great because you don't have to fall in love with the fool's gold. Uh, you got to bring it every day, and uh, I think good competition brings the best out of everybody. Uh, iron sharpens iron, as 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 it, as it goes, and. Uh, um, we got a lot of work to do yet. Absolutely. And Justin, real quick, just a few more seconds. You've been almost at Noblesville for almost 20 years now. How have you changed as a head coach? Well, I'd like to think I got more mature. Um, I think um, having children of my own that are now my oldest is and can great to graduate uh, from college. And my um, one of my our middle child, uh, Dylan, is a senior pitcher on this team. So that's been a good experience. And then my daughter is uh, Reagan is a, um, a junior here at the high school. So having kids at this age kind of gives a different perspective on that teenager experience, um, uh, socially especially. And um, this can be more inside than what it like, it's like to be a parent of kids that age, and how to interact with them when they come home from the from the ballpark or from the playing field and. Um, let them know we're proud of them no matter what. It's about their effort and attitude. Absolutely. That perspective for sure. That is Justin Kiever, the head coach of the Noblesville baseball team. Justin, appreciate you joining us today. Thanks for having me. Still ahead on the Zone Extra, it's time for our Athlete of the Week. One of the smaller schools in the state is home to some of the best seniors on the track. Up next, we have head up to Park Tudor High School. Plus, our on-campus segment features a historic performance at UND earlier this month. This is the Zone Extra, presented by Franciscan Health Sports Medicine. Welcome back to the Zone Extra. It's a small school with a big presence on the high school track and field scene as a trio of Park Tudor Panthers are having outstanding seasons. Last month at the Hoosier State Relays, seniors Sophia Kennedy and Gretchen Farley, Farley rather, helped lead Park Tudor to a girls indoor state title for the first time ever. Meanwhile, on the boys' side, the Panthers finished in fifth, their best result ever, led by senior Josiah Rogers, who set a state indoor record in the 60 meter finals. All three Panthers say they are excited for the rest of the season and that the Hoosier State Relay experience is something they will not soon forget. It was an unreal experience, um, especially being a small school like Park Tudor. We've never won a state championship like that. All the girls. We were all in it together. We had this goal. We had it planned out. It was just the most amazing energy. And after we accomplished it, it was just even better holding that trophy in our hands. Having the team do something together um, and win as a team like really boosted our energy. Our, um, and you know, it got us back out onto the track, excited for outdoor season. I kind of felt like a great day was approaching um, in the prelims. Wait a little bit, final comes around, and I feel I'm in the zone. I'm ready to go. And then not knowing really what I ran, I'm kind of not even looking at the board really. And then I heard this big, oh, and I look at the board, I see 668. I was like, man, it felt, it felt fake almost. The Park Tudor community is so amazing in that Gretchen and Josiah and I just feel so supported by everyone here because it's such a tight knit community. I mean, we walk into the classroom on a regular school day and the teachers are like, Oh, hey, good job in the track meet last night. You know, you did great. Um, I mean, for instance, we were at the track meet on Friday. Like, we have all our teachers out here. We have all of our classmates. Sophia and Gretchen are very talented runners. Uh, there's also, also other talented runners here that are blossoming into their talents. Um, and I think Gretchen, Sophia, and I have formed a bond over this recent um, success of ours. That is awesome stuff. Time for a break, but still more to come on the Zone Extra, including our play of the week. And it's the latest installment of Ask the Commissioner with Paul Nydig of the IHSAA. This is the Zone Extra, presented by Franciscan Health Sports Medicine. Welcome back to the Zone Extra. Now it's time to go on campus. Earlier this month, you Indy made national news courtesy of Brady Ware. 
His accomplishment is so big, it's heading to the College Baseball Hall of Fame. This after he showed up 15 minutes late. Our Angela Morian has the story. Nolan Ryan, Babe Ruth, Shohei Otani. None of them have done what Brady Ware did on this field at UND Friday night. He not only hit for the cycle, he threw a no hitter, etching himself into baseball legend. I mean, I think it's pretty clear it's probably the, the top of the, uh, you can't really do anything much better than that. So hard to, hard to beat that. No one's beat it not in college or the pros. A perfect four for four from the plate, starting with a home run and a triple in the second inning. Stretch out, no one can get it! On the mound, 11 strikeouts, zero hits. I think surreal is, you know, a better word for it for me. I mean, it was just fantastic. I think as the game went on, I started realizing kind of what was happening. So I wouldn't say I got nervous, but it definitely kind of Got me amped up a little bit and ready to keep going. He was just throwing the fastball and the changeup for five innings, really. And then in the sixth, we started to bring them in with the curveball. And then they really just, they had no idea what was coming at that point. Their faces were just like white and they were all shocked. They were like, what are we supposed to do now? The kicker, he hadn't pitched much this season. Friday was his first game back from injury. They were planning on, you know, keeping me at about four innings, 60 pitches-ish. But I guess as the game started, you know, to, to keep going on, they, they kind of decided to like, gotta let him go at this point. People would have showed up at my house with pitchforks if I had to took him out. <laughs> <laughs> 110 pitches later, millions have seen, heard, and retweeted the story. Honestly, just jaw dropping, just to see like that the university that I go to is on national television, national news. Just to be a part of that history that Brady was able to accomplish has just been like, honestly, a dream come true. If you stay on the path. Whereas everybody else jumps off, you'll be rewarded. Maybe not like this, but you'll be rewarded because there's only one person that can say that they've thrown a no-hitter and, and hit for the cycle in the same game, and that's Brady Ware. Ware, Ruth, Otani, in that order. Angela Morian, Wish TV, WishTV.com, and like us on Facebook. What an epic performance. Now it's time for our Ask the Commissioner. Each week we take one of your questions to IHSA Commissioner Paul Neidig and bring you his answer. Here is this week's question. What went into the decision to move from a four to three week cross country state tournament? And what has the reaction been? The three week tournament we felt for a long time has been needed in cross country. First of all, you have a small cross country team and to keep your athletes peaked for four straight weeks of the tournament and have a legitimate shot at a state championship is tough. Uh, we know from talking to our coaches that a peak period of three weeks is much more doable than a four week period is one. But we also had sectionals in the state that almost everybody that ran in the sectional was advancing to the regional. And we just felt we needed a more competitive round at the sectional, which we have. But we are now advancing more students, student athletes through the tournament. So we'll have more student athletes to get to run in the semi state and we'll have more students student athletes to get the state finals experience. So uh, while there's a little bit of a trade off there, we think the tournament is going to be highly competitive and a much more uh, competitive event from the sectional round all the way through the state championship. Thanks again to the commissioner for joining us. Here is how you can submit questions. Send us a tweet using the hashtags the zone extra and ask the commish and your question could be used on a future show. Now it's time to take a look at our play of the week. Each week we feature one of the top plays from the world of high school sports in central Indiana. Here's our play this week. Carmel baseball taking on Noblesville. Kenny Bruntlett with the bases loaded. Not anymore. A grand slam that helps the Hounds win an 11 to 10 thriller over Hamilton County rival Noblesville. And you see how much that hit means to the Greyhounds as he rounds third base and goes on to score. What a game. Now, a crew see a lot of great action, but we want to see your best plays every week. So send them our way and it could be featured on a future show. That's going to do it for the Zone Extra. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to tune in again next Thursday night for a brand new episode. For even more Central Indiana High School sports, log on to wishtv.com. Spring sports are in full swing. It's phenomenal. Have a great rest of your night.